Welcome to Savinors. Today we're going to talk about some nice tenderloin roast. We are going to clean the roast, trim it, remove the tenderloin chain, talk about the various cuts, the tenderloin tail, the Chateaubriand, the butt cut, how to cook it, and portioning. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go in between, there's a seam between the chain and the actual roast. So you can, you can, you can kind of feel with your hands to find it, or just take the tip of your knife and open it up. There's a lot of connective tissue and fat around the tenderloin roast. So a lot of the times when you go into a butcher shop, you don't really get to see this part. You really, you just kind of see it trimmed and sometimes people are like, can you remove the fat? Well, the reality is there's a, there's a ton of fat around it. The muscle's really encased in fat. So we have the chain and the tenderloin roast. We're gonna trim this up. There's a lot of connective tissue and fat on here. We're actually gonna make sure that we start from the tail and work our way towards the butt end, which is the bigger end. And the idea behind that is that's the way the grain runs. If you were to take your knife and go towards the, from the bigger end to the tip, you'd actually just be ripping the meat all the way down. So you wanna just make sure you're angling your knife up away from the meat and also the starting so you're going towards the actual butt end of the roast. You can use your hands to start and that's really easy to do. Just kind of pull on the meat a bit. You're not really pulling the meat too much. You're really kind of pulling the seam in between the fat and the meat. That comes off there. A lot of that fat can definitely be used for the good old rendering, um, making things like gravy. You can also use it for things like frying chicken, which we do here at the shop. I'm just kind of scraping on top of the fat. I'm not actually cutting any of the meat. I'm actually just right on top of the silver skin, which has helped me not to rip into the roast to make sure I can see where I'm going. And you can flip it and do the same. On the, on the back end of the actual roast, you'll see there's some little grooves. We tend to take those off, not too much, just enough to make sure you're, you're taking off some of the connective tissue and the fat. You go too deep, you're just actually wasting a ton of meat. So you want to be careful not to do, to go too deep on that. You can see it now. I can see the start of my tenderloin where the silver skin starts at, kind of in the middle of the tenderloin. And then I'm simply going to get my knife right underneath, just a little bit, right on the top of the surface. I'm going to hold this up at an angle, 45 degree angle like this, starting to tip of my knife, holding tension on the silver skin, and I'm going to pull towards the butt end using the whole length of my knife all the way down. And that's my nice silver skin. Ideally, you don't have a ton of meat on the other side. So when you, when you go to actually remove that, that little bit of silver skin that's on top, it should have, that's the, the max amount of meat you should have on there. It should be pretty lean. I'm just gonna repeat the process. Starting at the very end, a shallow cut up, 45 degree angle, and then starting from here all the way to the tip, so I can't go any further. Okay, so we cleaned up the tenderloin roast. We have the chain or the runner. The chain is actually really responsible for keeping the actual roast attached to the backbone. So this particular muscle would kind of be just flopping around and didn't have that chain or what we call the runner. Now, you may have noticed there's some specks of fat that I purposely left in here. I will say when you're roasting, this muscle is super lean. It does not have a lot of fat. So the, this little bit of exterior fat actually is a good thing. Some people will see this and want to trim it. You do not have to trim that. That is actually how it should look. If you over trim your roast, it will be more dry. If you leave that little bit of fat, it actually helps to base the actual roast and keeps it a little more moist. Now, we're gonna do several things. We're actually gonna tie this roast. We're gonna make a nice whole roast tied. We're gonna make a Chateaubriand. We're gonna make steak tips. We're also gonna talk about how to get nice steaks out of the butt end, and also talk about how to cook some of these various cuts. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually cut the tail, and I'm just gonna make a 90 degree cut all the way down, and I'll fold that in, and then we'll tie it up. And then after I've tied it, I'll untie it, and then we'll talk about the various sections. So we're cutting this. You can see almost, almost 90% down, and right where it starts to taper down, we get to that narrow end, you fold that and that will give you a nice roast section here where you can get a nice portion of that end right there. Now as you can see, now the roast is starting to look a little more symmetrical. It's starting to look a little more so when you cook it, you'll actually get a little more even cooking going on. When I tie it, it's going to make it so the thickness starts to be a little more uniform. That's the idea of why we took that tail, went 90% of the way down and then folded it underneath so we'd have a more even thickness on the tapering end of the roast. Now you don't want to tie it too tight. 
you want to make sure that you're allowing the meat to keep its natural shape, that you're not pulling too tight because the actual twine will actually cut through the protein. Now this twine in particular is what we call 24 ply, which means that's the thickness of it. You, there are thinner ones. The thinner ones tend to really rip through, so I stick with a thinner one just because I prefer it. A thicker one, I should say. But if you want the thinner one, that's fine too. A lot of tying, so we'll probably see you in a second. All right, so we actually have the tenderloin roast nice and tied up. You'll see that it has nice consistent ties going all the way down. The roast itself is going to be a lot more cylinder, a little more uniform to cook. Even that bigger end now has a little bit of ability to cook a little bit similar to this end. Don't worry if, you're not, if the, you don't get the exact same cook on it because at the end of the day, you're going to have people who want medium well, medium rare, rare. Your rare size is going to come from the bigger end. Your medium well is going to come from the smaller end and your medium rare is gonna come from the middle. So now this is what the tenderloin roast looks like when it's just untied. So we're cutting off the tail, which is fine to do. That's gonna be our steak tips there, which is really tasty stuff. This center cut here is what we call the Chateaubriand, which is a French term. It's the center cut of the tenderloin roast. You're gonna hear various synonyms for tenderloin. You're gonna hear filet mignon, you're gonna hear Chateaubriand, you're gonna hear center cut. Whenever you hear these various terms, it, it, they all mean the same thing, but the chateau is very specified, meaning a center cut roast. And that's sometimes idea for making a, a traditional French dish called beef wellington. Now, if you just want the center cut for more of a uniform cut, that's fine. But what I will say is the tying really does help to achieve the same doneness. If you're going to worry about portioning, you can get a lot more. The chateau is actually a lot more expensive than if you get the butt and the tail in. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to cut right here. And you can see that gives me that nice cut here without tying it at all. It's nice and kind of cylinder looking and good to go. We have our butt in here. It looks a little different, a little bigger of a roast. This is a really good roast here if you want to have a roast for three people. A good roast, I'd say if you're portioning this and you were getting eight ounce portions, you'd be right around there. You probably get between five to four and a half portions out of that. Now, this weighs about two and a half to two pounds. So if you're ordering, you're trying to keep in mind of how to actually order when you're thinking about the number of guests you have. We normally recommend eight ounce portions. Uh, if you want to go more on the lean side, you can definitely do a six to seven ounce portion, but definitely let us know how many people you're cooking for and we will make recommendations based on that or we'll weigh it out accordingly. If you have three people, we'll say, okay, a pound and a half. Do indicate if you want leftovers because that's a factor in weighing out too. Leftovers typically want two to four ounces for per person. Here we have the button of the tenderloin roast, the Chateaubriand, the chain or the runner, and the tenderloin tail. Now I said this before, you can definitely get nice steaks out of this, steaks out of this. These are really great for tenderloin tips. Just to remind you, this is a lean cut, so you know it really does well with a doneness of you know medium rare at most. Some people go to medium, that's fine. You can definitely do well done as well, but I would recommend medium rare. Some people like it rare, but you want it rare, not raw. Now, season your roast aggressively when you're letting it temper, and then let it sit out for that 25 to 35 minutes. Get a nice sear on your roast or roast in the oven at high heat, and then let it rest. If you're looking for recipes or recommendations, please visit our website, stabnorthmarket.com. We have plenty of tips and videos to help you out. We'll see you there.